Why rubber monsters and why not beautiful bronze sculptures? Go for it, Ed. Well, for me, it's so much, it's so much more creative. Now, not to pick on the art community, but it's kind of like, well, you got to do a cowboy. Are you going to do a bunny rabbit or something like that? I like the idea of the, the freedom of monsters and uh, I don't know. I just like rubber. Well, but some of my favorite Favorite uh, things we make actually are like the gargoyle, master gargoyle, which, you know, is like a statue. Um, that's one of my very favorites. So yeah, you know, I mean, so we don't do bronze. We do it in rubber. That's true. We've made rubber look like bronze. And actually there's some characters that we would like to do in bronze and the gargoyle is one of them. That's true. But um, the cost is pretty high. It's just a whole different vibe than monsters. A lot of freedom in monsters. You seem like a very unlikely team to make horrific creatures. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We yeah. are an unlikely team. She's so friendly. I don't know. It just it just evolved that way. I kind of Marcia was doing her own thing and it was nice stuff like horticulture and and reasonable things, and then I drug her into the monsters, but uh, she liked it. You didn't really drag me in. Oh no, what did I do? I mean, I love what we do. I love the design, I love, I mean, monsters, gargoyles, whatever. I love it, I wouldn't be in it if, if I didn't yeah, love it. Yeah, but you weren't a monster kid. I mean, the only monster no. movie I know you saw was The Blob when you were young. I did see The Blob, that was scary. But, <laughs> But I did see The Exorcism, too. That was scary. Oh, yeah, the Exorcist, that was scary. That's a scary one. But, um, no, yeah, I have a science background. Um, but this, this works. I like it. What is the most amazing thing you've ever made? Hmm. I know. Oh. Go ahead. I don't know. What That's do you tough. think? Well, I think it's the beast. Now, the beast, we did the sculpture and came up with the design. And then we had an inflatable company sew the thing. But that, to me, that was so big and so interactive where you walked in its mouth and, you know, came yeah, out the it's rear. it's the biggest, that's for sure. But we didn't really make it here. I mean, we designed it. Right. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's my most amazing. What's yours? Um... Yeah, maybe, maybe. Even though we didn't, like I said, we didn't make it here. It's, yeah, but it. It was. We made cool. it in our minds. Yeah. What is your biggest failure? It was the beast. <laughs> it, <laughs> How it, funny! I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it's the inflatable beast because uh, we went to all the trouble of making all these huge fiberglass molds, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that we thought. Well, you thought, really, but... Oh, thanks. Sorry. Throw me into the beast. I did. But the thought was, you know, that you needed the latex pieces on the inflatable um, to make it a, a believable creature. Yeah. But in fact, what happened is got the fiberglass molds made, made the latex pieces, put them on the inflatable, sunk the inflatable down. <laughs> they were too heavy. And that was probably... Now, I don't know what the worst moment of my life was, but that's got to be in the top 10. Yeah, it wasn't the worst moment of life, but it was, we all just sat on buckets that night and hung our heads, hung the head. And yeah, because like, I mean, oh. it was it was tens of thousands of dollars. And the, I, I don't want to go into it because it'd take too long. But what we had to do to make this armature to sculpt the clay on and then all the clay we had to throw on this thing and Oh man, well, and then to have it collapse. But in the end, it was better because it didn't need the rubber. It's just, it hurt a lot. Yeah, it was a fail, but we've had quite a few fails. Oh, we but, fail all the time. But that's how you learn, you know? <laughs> that's how we've learned. It's, that's too expensive a lesson. Well, yeah, but that's I'd rather what, be beaten with a rubber hose. That's what it takes is, you know, you fail, you learn, hopefully. Sometimes we repeat the same mistake over and over again. Yeah, but when you learn it really good, when it hurts a lot, you usually yeah, yeah. don't repeat those. <laughs> Where did the slogan built to last come from? Hmm, well, I don't know when we first used it, but I think in a catalog, and we were just trying to think of kind of ways to describe what we do, and 
Um, we try as much as possible for our stuff to last years and years and years. Um, like the electric chair, you know, mm -hmm. there was one that was in a fire somewhere and maybe 20 years later, they pulled it out of the, the fire. The building was destroyed. Yeah, pulled it out and the body was gone or destroyed or something. It was burned pretty bad. But it still worked. Yeah, it still worked. Now, here's the thing. Actually, it's funny that you brought that up because that was, in my mind, a lot what that slogan was. We found out with the electric chair, we introduced this thing, made hundreds of them that first year, but we had a design flaw and the heads flew off. <laughs> And so we learned real quick, if we didn't build stuff to last, we would take it on the chin later on because we had to pay, I, it was over a hundred bodies we had to replace at our cost and shipping. So we learned our lesson early on. That was our first animatronic. We learned our lesson early on that if we didn't build them right, it was gonna cost. Yeah, and so even our Frightronics, you know, not the animatronics, but the Frightronics, which are all electric, um, with motors, um, they're designed so that you can pull them out year after year after year, put them out in your yard or whatnot. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so they're not a, not designed to be a one season use. Yeah. And it, it does cost more, but that way, if you're a serious home haunter or haunter, you're building your arsenal instead of starting from scratch almost, you know, every year. Well, who buys these things? We, well, we, yeah, we sell just to the home user, home consumer, amusement parks, ha haunted houses. Celebrities buy our all stuff. All kinds it's, of just... And it, the thing is, it's all over the world. Yeah. I mean, th there's addresses I'm like, really? They would buy this? What's some of the weirdest locations? I remember like like some crazy locations. I don't know crazy, but well, pretty much all over. You wouldn't expect. Um, I don't know. what. Well, Austria, maybe? I don't know. No, but there was stuff like Afghanistan and stuff. I don't know. It's just shocking how people all over the world use. Now, most of it goes to the United States, but, but we sell it all over. Yeah. Where did the ideas come from? So, ideas for what we do. A lot of times people think it's just Ed and I. That's not really mm. true. Um, it's just Ed. <laughs> we, get, we get ideas uh from all over but a lot from our crew yeah you know from um everybody that works here all year long they have they have good ideas well they've lived it and breathed it for so many years that, that we used to do things where we'd have the crew this is back in the old days when we had 75 people and stuff and we'd put out you know give me your idea and they would come up with rubber christmas trees and things like this. not very usable <laughs> This crew have lived it with us so long that they really have some great ideas. So we, and I don't know, we sometimes it's just kind of what's trending in film and stuff, but. Uh, yeah, but, we yeah. usually have a long list uh, also of things that we can't do every year. Yeah. So we, we go through. back to that sometimes and, oh, we didn't get to do these last year. Right. We'll do these this year. How do you know when you have a winner? Lots of sales. No, before the sales. Yeah, that's cheap. We don't, and we never do. You would think after so many years in business, you could, hey, that's a winning idea, and it's like you make that, and and uh, mm -mm. you just have to. Now, sometimes we feel better about other things that once they're done, you can look at them, especially. But you never know till the till the public sees it and they tell you. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sometimes, though, we do something and, like, right off, it's like... Yeah, you know, everybody that goes didn't really, crazy. That didn't really turn All out. Oh, those, or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've made a few of those in our life. Yeah, but uh, we're putting them out online nowadays uh, right away, and so you get a pretty immediate response yeah. way before sales. Um, yeah, Immediate that's response helpful. on if people like it or not. Right. How do you both work together so well? Um, 
We work together pretty well. Um, I think over the years we've worked together for, what, 35 years at least, maybe 36. So over those years, we've kind of delegated our responsibilities more. So, um, Master, blaster. <laughs> I do all the meathead heavy lifting and she's up there. Is that right? No, no, do it this way. <laughs> Forward! <laughs> no, no! <laughs> well then, eat 440 bolts. <laughs> No, I don't know. Why do we work together? Yeah, because kind of we respect each other's what we're good at, I guess. And we both have say in all the stuff, but yet try not to micromanage. I'm a little bit of a micromanager, but you are also. But anyway. If it's really important, I, I can get a little... But, yeah. But usually I'm pretty easy going, wouldn't you say? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what motivates you? What mo yeah. Take it, but. Well, I think the creative process, for me, uh, I can't speak for Marcia, but it's that, that Dr. Frankenstein thing where you can create something and bring it to life, and it's a very creatively fulfilling business and, and very few restrictions. Um, well, I, well, I guess there's restrictions in the area that I don't care about and that is, you know, like it doesn't have to be beautiful or, or uh, socially acceptable. It's actually, we get away with a lot. So I don't know, just yeah, the creative part. Yeah, the creative is the most fulfilling, you know, um, design the initial design, coming up with new stuff. That's definitely the most fun. Um, however, the people motivate me. You know, our customers truly, like over the years, just amazing people that we work with. I love that. Well, I love, that's true. love making them happy. Um, our team, love who, everyone we work with and yeah. So that motivates me a lot is to try to try to I know it sounds corny but try to give back in some way um, to the people that buy our product but also the people that are here our team um, try to make everyone's life a little better I don't know I know yeah, it's weird kind of weird like that's a little cornball that's life, like it's more about the journey. Life, just life better through monsters <laughs> kind of thing. But no, no but I it mean, it's true. a high impact, believe it or not, a high impact for a lot of people. Um, yeah. We get emails from people. That's super motivating. You know, emails from people saying, believe it or not, like what we do changed our life. And Yeah, that's pretty heartwarming yeah. when, when you get these uh, emails from people that, you know, are... And you hope you haven't changed their life for the worst, but they, you've changed their life and they're so happy and things. And, and, yeah. and uh, people have gotten into the business, people in other countries that, that uh, have uh, started making monsters and things. It is pretty cool. And, uh, and sometimes people think, you know, they're a little bit weird, like younger people or whatever. They might think they're a little weird because they like, you know, monsters or whatnot. And so Aren't you supposed to like Rabbits and ducks and things like that? I mean, you look like you would like that. I do like horses, but I like monsters more. You like monsters more? Yeah. You know, I'm kind of with you. So, I think it's an encouragement to them um, that we've had this business so long and we like what we do and so forth, so. Well, yeah. and case in point, Tom Cassidy, who works for us, he was very discouraged by uh, at least I know one of his art teachers and uh, she said well you need to do real art and you're, you're never gonna make a living doing this and so forth but he saw the TV show and he's like well they're they live in Colorado too and they're making a living and so that encouraged him and so that's great 
How has distortions changed over the years? Ah, it's changed a lot. A lot. Well, just briefly, you started with mass. You started right. with mass, 1978. Uh, went through the mask years, prop years, animatronics, frightronics. But I mean, a, a big part of how we've changed is Initially, we had one customer, Morris Costumes, yeah. who is still our distributor. Oh, yeah. Still our biggest and, customer. And, you know, biggest customer because he's our distributor. But now we have hundreds uh, or thousands yeah. of customers. And so that's changed a lot. And um, it's just great connecting with more and more people. Love that. Yeah, I you know the thing is we kind of had to change. It's not like oh we're tired of mass now. We had to because as China got better and better and they were able to do things cheaper, we were watching our mass sales go down so that we got into props and then and then we we got into haunted houses. That was a boom uh and so forth. But, but we felt compelled, compelled to make those changes. However, what I will say that's really cool now is we're getting back to all parts of the business. We're starting to do more mass now. So we're going back to our roots. And, and a lot of that is because of the internet. You can now connect to the world. You're not beholding to some retailer to try to um, uh, carry something. Like I had the hardest thing, uh, it was the hardest thing ever to get retailers to buy the original alien mask from from you know Giger's alien and they're like oh that's too expensive no one will buy it well they did buy them and yeah, but I, I just couldn't break that barrier because of the cost well the customer doesn't care if it's the most expensive mask they've ever seen if they like it they'll buy it so that's been a big change and it's been very helpful yeah what do you like about the monster business hmm I like everything I like everything about the monster. Now wait a minute, paying bills? Come on. What about not that? So much. All the, that paperwork you're doing? Right yeah, now? not so much. No, I don't like paperwork. Well, I'm going to get corny. I, I'm 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 going to agree with Marsha finally that it is, it is the people. And what's great is we've connected so well now because of the internet. Uh, and I think people on the outside of the industry think that. They must be kind of strange people, but actually, I think monster makers and, and the people that buy monsters and stuff are sometimes some of the nicest, most normal people ever. They just enjoy odd stuff. It's it's not like we're all, you know. Well, yeah, true. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, I, I was running out of steam anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and what's interesting, we keep saying monster and stuff, but you know, we sell all kinds of stuff that's not considered monsters. You know, I mean, I wouldn't say Bubble Barf, Mr. Bubble Barf. This guy's not a monster, even though some people disagree with me. He's a little scary. <laughs> um, this nice collector werewolf. Well, maybe he's a he monster. He needs a hairdo, but. But, um, but yeah, you know, Mr. Bubble Barf, whatever. We make a lot of fun stuff for amusement parks too. Seriously. I can lose 20 pounds in a single belt. So, we're not limited to just one genre. No, that's right. That's kind of made us a little bit, uh, like with the haunted house industry, they just want the scary stuff. But we enjoy things like Mr. Bubble Barf and so forth. Then we sell our fair share in the giant. Some of those things don't quite fit that mold. And that's where, well, we're kind of getting into different territory. And what's really kind of amazing to me is recently we, uh, after a series of tests and things uh, in town and things, we opened uh, Monster World in Denver. Or we're opening because of the current situation, it's stalled. And it was funny to me, I realized Huh, all that weird stuff that didn't quite fit anywhere fits perfectly in Monster World because it's it's for all ages. And so uh, it's not about terrorizing children. It's uh, it's about the love of monsters. And so that has been really, uh, really fun to get into that whole thing. 
What are each of your favorite kind of monsters? <laughs> Let me go first. Yes. Used to, I would always say aliens, but I have fallen in love with all kinds of monsters. It's a very diverse here at Distortions. I, I, it's mostly, uh, I judge them based on their character. That sounds a little like Martin Luther King Jr., but it's true. I, you know, I can like all sorts of monsters, even though originally I would have always said aliens. Uh, it, it has to do with the creativity of them. Yeah, I, I like all kinds of monsters. Um, Classic monsters, maybe, are my favorite. You know, that's why I like Master Gargoyle. I like Nosferatu. I like um, the Jack Attack. You know, I kind of like the classic, really well done, beautiful monsters. Yeah. I will have to say, even though gore has its place, and we do, we do some gory stuff, I'm not super attracted to that. I find it gorgeous. Ah. Not too good, yeah. What are the biggest challenges? Challenges in business. I would say the biggest challenges in business, in our business, are very much like the biggest challenges in most small business. And that is cash flow. You know, um, throughout the years and just you know the ups and downs as far as having to change what we make how we make it or just the season many, yeah the season we're a very seasonal business less so now than we used to be we used to be super super seasonal it was like oh it's dead in the winter yeah time. crickets in november and less so <laughs> less like that now but yeah so small businesses um we really relate to the challenges because we've had so many years of going through it. Um, you know, we relate to small businesses um, struggling. Um, and then, you know, so happy when, when people succeed and yeah. keep going. I will say um, one thing we found out about over the years is how wonderful people are to really help. So yeah. if people are struggling in their business or trying, most people are very helpful and willing to reach out and give advice or help or whatever. People are, people are super wonderful. Yeah, no, I agree with all that. I, it, it, the first thing that came to my mind wasn't so much the business side of it. It's going back to creative to try to figure out what people want. That is so hard. It, it's, uh, uh, you can't just say, well, I want to make this monster. And then you have to, yeah, but is anybody going to buy it? How would they use it? You know, we have to, we have to put it through that filter uh, because there is a, a financial side to, uh, to it. And we have to make things that people want. What is your favorite horror movie as a child or now? <laughs> the blob, right? The blob. No. <laughs> I was little. I was scared. I ran to the bathroom. They had, they had a window in the girls' bathroom. So you go to the bathroom because you're scared, and then you would just like hide, and then you'd peek out through the window to see what was happening. And it's oh no, the blob. <laughs> But no, I didn't watch a lot of horror as a child, no. You poor thing. I only remember that and like I said, Exorcist, I don't know. I didn't watch a lot That's of horror. That's bad parenting. Now, my father saw to it that we went and saw some, some scary stuff like the crawling hand. I remember Beth and Neva had to go with mom to the bathroom because of the creeping hand. And that was pretty creepy. That was, a, yeah. I don't know what that movie was, but that was some, some creepy stuff. Uh, probably as an adult, my is Exorcist, super scary. Psycho was super scary, but it's I can't say it's my favorite, but it was well done. I mean, it definitely terrified me. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, it wasn't really a monster movie, but it was very scary. It was scary. Uh, as a child, I I remember there was this. I think it was. The house on the hill or something. It, very scary. 
Um, but, you know, I was 17, 18 when Exorcist came out, so I was almost a child, and that was, that would have to be it. And I, as an adult, it's still, it's, that thing endures. They, they struck gold with that movie. It was, it was perfect on so many levels that I, I, I would have to rank that as my all-time favorite. I know there's a lot of good, I don't want to make anybody mad, I know there's a lot of good stuff out there, but that one, man, it scared people. You watch video of people coming out of the theater and freaking out from that film. There's never been anything quite like that. In 24 selected engagements in the United States, William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist opened. Oh, God, I can't. Well, you've heard about all those reports about the exorcist and uh, the trouble it's causing, people fainting and so forth. I went to check it out. The manager of the National Theater in Westwood says that there indeed are at least a dozen people who faint or become ill during every showing. I've ever seen. Oh, it's weird. She turned her head around. <laughs> so why don't you just step out so I can get it back? <laughs> <laughs> she never do anything like it. Did you see the part where she turns her head around? Not, not yet. I'm not gonna see it either. It just scared me to death. Things just like this just it just scared, really scared me to death. I guess it was when she was talking to Devil's Voice. Oh, oh God, I can't believe it. What is your favorite science fiction movie as a child and adult? Hmm. I don't think I watched science fiction as a child. Oh, Marsha. I don't think so. There was some kind of Pat Boone going into the center of the earth. I don't know if <laughs> that I'd journey to the center of the earth. I don't I know if I classify <laughs> that as science. It had fiction. ducks. It's, it wasn't. It wasn't really. Yeah. But um, well, it was science fiction. Was it? So, yeah, yeah. You could. So you could whatever. say that. But I would say, Alien. I liked Aliens also, but I have to say Alien was my favorite as an adult. Okay, as a child, I always said this, um, The Time Machine. Uh, that, that movie on every level, from the music, the time setting, the fascination with time travel, it had monsters. I mean, this was, for me, that was it. Um, and it was, it was hard for me when Alien and Aliens came along because they were so good. What is your favorite part of making monsters for a living? My favorite part of making monsters for a living as opposed to something else is all the people we deal with. Our customers, our team here, wonderful people. I can't say enough about our team, by the way. I want no. to put a plug in. No, that's right. It's very unusual. People think, you know, we're kind of the faces or whatever, mostly Ed, but... <laughs> But what? I mean, this this couldn't happen with our no. without our team. So I wish people could get to know our team better. we come up with these ideas and things okay here's what we're doing and they just make it happen you know it's a, it's a, it is a remarkable team but it's interesting that there was the words making monsters in that uh, question because that really changed it for us because now because of the show and, and subsequently the internet we've been able to connect with all those people that like our stuff and so we're we're it's hard to explain except 
uh, like maybe a rock star experiences when he sings the song in front of a crowd and, and gets that feedback. That feedback for an artist is really cool. And so we put something out and, you know, the world either, you know, eh, or whatever, but a lot of times people are very uh, uh, appreciative and, and that makes it yeah. fun. That is what, what, what uh, what's exciting for me that we didn't have for all those years. Yeah, if it was just us alone here making monsters. That would be fantastic. That'd be crazy. I mean, we'd still enjoy making monsters. We'd still enjoy what we do, but, um, yeah, it wouldn't be the same. No.